Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love Online, meeting every Saturday and every Tuesday. God bless all of you who watch the videos, and God bless our church family. Now, we are getting ready to follow the word. God is talking about people who are bruised, people who are broken, people who have issues, and people who are going through. And I want you, I want to ask you a question real quick. I want to ask you, what do you think Jesus came here to do? And for right now, I'm going to unmute the mics real quick because I want everybody to tell me what is the main two things you think Jesus came to do, the most important two things. All participants are unmuted. I like you guys to answer the question, what are some of the most important things you think Jesus came to accomplish? Save us from our sins and heal us. Okay, save us from our sins and heal us. Go on. Anybody else? Uh, yes, he uh, he created the covenant so that uh, uh, we had an easy way for salvation. Without that covenant, I don't think uh, any of us would have been saved. Mm-hmm. Okay, anybody else? Uh, to set us free from bondage and redeem us back to the Father. Mm -hmm. All correct so far. Anyone else? To show us love, show us what, what a true Christian is, and how we can be loving to each other and uh, to our God, etc. Very good. Anybody else? Show us the right way to live mm -hmm. with the commandments. Mm -hmm. You did. All right. Now, I'm going to share with you something that might be a bit of a surprise. In the book of Luke, when Jesus announced his ministry from Luke chapter 4, the shocking part was he did not say, I came to save, which of course he did. He did not say I came to demonstrate God's love, which he did, but he didn't say it. Uh, he didn't say I came to die on the cross for your sins so you could be free. He didn't say that either, but that's what he came to do. But this is how he announced his ministry. And it's kind of surprising that he named some of the things that unfortunately most churches don't emphasize. They emphasize we get to escape hell, death, and the grave. We get to have an easier ride with God than without him. All the things you guys said on the list, which I'm not going to repeat because that will be on the, on the video. But the thing that gets me is he said everything that you wouldn't even think of. And that's what warms my heart to him the most. Because of all the experiences, I experienced what he listed here more than everything else. I had the experience of being saved, being forgiven, being uh, delivered, all kind of stuff. But this is the part that a lot of people don't recognize. And I'm bringing this out because when I asked the Lord what he, taught, what he wanted me to talk about, he quoted a verse right from this scripture. So this is what you get to hear. Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 19. And I read, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written. And for those of you who don't know where that is, it is in Isaiah 61 in the Old Testament. Now, verse 18, and this is Jesus announcing his ministry, not the purpose for which he came, but his ministry. And the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He 
has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Hmm. And that is the title of what he told me the subject matter is, to set at liberty them that are bruised. And I'm going to tell you right now, from the day we're born, we're already getting beaten and battered. How do I know that? We are assigned to us from day one familiar spirits and demons that are there to circumvent, cancel, destroy, uh, wipe out all of the purposes, all of the giftings and callings, all of our destiny that God has laid before us. The whole purpose of the demonic assignments, the whole purpose is to make sure that God's purposes do not come to fruition in our lives. So they begin doing damage from day one. Some people get damaged by having a mother give birth to them, not wanting any more kids, not wanting any kids, having an attitude towards the father of the kid, of you. I mean, it, it gets crazy, the different things. Some women have been raped and they give birth to a child. And it's a constant reminder of the rape. Some people have been done wrong by the father. Or there's something about that child that just drives them up the wall. They don't know it's a whole demonic thing going on. It's demonic dynamics. You could call it demonic dynamics. But these are assignments that are against us. And the scars and the cuts the gouges, the wounds, the destruction begins. It's so sad. Some babies experience rejection in their mother's womb. That's how sad this is. So we're being born into this world that was shaped in iniquity. And we're born and shaped in iniquity. So sin comes naturally for us to do, very natural. We don't have to be taught to do wrong. We don't have to be taught to lie. We don't have to be taught to sneak around. We don't have to be taught to do what we were told not to do, to disobey. We, we don't have to take disobedience one-on-one -on -one courses. You notice they don't have those kind of courses in college, do they? They don't have them in any school. Lying, 102. Advanced lying and scheming. No, they don't have it. It's in our fiber. It's in our nature. It's in our being. Because we were born and shaped in iniquity. So, the only defense we have is to be born again. Now, all of you know that. That's basic. That's elementary level. Christianity. You must be born again. And no, you don't crawl back into your mama's womb and get born again. No. You have to ask the Lord to forgive you. You have to ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Put yourself under his tutelage and under his care, under his surgical care so he can undo the damage that was done from day one. Some of you go to school, you've been made fun of, you've been ostracized, you've been rejected. Some of you have been put down by your own family members, talked about, lied about, uh, chewed up and spit out. Some of you don't even know what it feels like to have family around you. You don't even know, you don't know, you can't even relate to sitting on your mama's lap and her bouncing you up and down with joy cherishing and, and adoring you. Some of you have never had that. I know I didn't. 
So when you come up through all of this clutter, all of this maze of destruction and hurt, harm, bruising, woundedness, abuse, rejection, being neglected, all of these things that work against us, that work against the purpose that God has put us here for. We have a whole lot of undoing, a whole lot of damage control that needs to be handled. But unfortunately, many of you try to handle it by yourself. God, please help me with this. I'm going to tell you, this is the bad news. We got good news and bad news. I'll give you the bad news first. You will never heal you. Time will never heal wounds. It may bury them under a bunch of other stuff, but time does not heal wounds. You will never experience something that you don't believe in. Oh boy, listen. Some of you are going through life right now. You've got a box, a bag, or a drawer full of prescription medication. You're dealing with all kinds of emotional issues, all kinds of mental issues. Some of you are dealing with physical issues and you think that came from a fall. You think it came from a bicycle accident. But some of your physical ailments come from your emotional ailments. And some of you are just as blind to your emotional problems as you are to things happening on the other side of the world where you've never been and never heard the news about. Some of you are so detached from yourselves and that's your way of survival. But it does not erase the scars. Now, the one thing I want to say to you that most people have heard over and over and over, and I pray that God drives this point home to you on a personal level. God loves and cherishes you. God is mindful of you. It is not his will that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. There are more than, there are, there are more, there's more than one way to perish. Let's put it like that. Some of you are perishing in your liquor. Some of you are perishing in substance abuse. Some of you are perishing in your own body. Your body is alive and well, but your spirit is dying by the minute. Some of you want to die, and you don't have the nerve to carry it out, but you wish you were dead. Where does that come from? Think about it. That's not what God put you on this planet for. The Bible says, where the spirit of the Lord is and God is love, there is liberty. Freedom. That's what liberty is. Freedom. So for those of you who look at those of us that stop doing this, stop doing that, stop a whole lot of the things that we used to do before we knew the Lord, you see it as, oh, we're giving up everything. We're giving up our rights. No, baby. We're taking on the right to live, to truly live. We're taking on the right to be truly loved in ways that we've never been loved before by any human being, even those who truly loved us. Because God's love is incomparable. There's nobody, no one on this earth, no love on the face of this planet that compares to his love. And because God is love, the personification of love, his energy is pure love. Once you come in touch with him, you know you love. No ifs, ands, or buts.
But I'm going to tell you, do your best to get as close to him as you can. Because once you experience God's love, the lack thereof that you don't get on this planet won't phase you like it does now. It won't hurt you like it does now. Because you know that you know that you know in the very foundation of your soul, I am loved and I am somebody. And I count. That's right. It's a whole different level of freedom there. Whole different level of confidence. Now, I want to share with you this. I pray right now that as I'm speaking, that God will reach out to those of you who need it the most. Whether it's at this moment, later on today, during this week, during this month, at least by this year, that you will experience his touch of love. You will experience his presence of love. In his presence is fullness of joy. All of these things that you're scratching and digging, some of you in the streets, in the nightclubs, hanging out with your buddies, scratching and digging and clawing at, begging for, bending over, cracking a smile, and it ain't even the way you feel. But you're doing whatever it takes, trying to get acceptance, trying to get fulfillment, trying to get gratification, whatever you can get, trying to get man's attention. You see me batting my eyes? I got false eyelashes on. I didn't do this to grab a man. I did it because that's one of something to play with. It's fun for me. But some of you, you, you whack on the makeup, you whack on the, the jewelry, you're all clustered and cluttered up, and you let your cleavage show by, by 12 inches and your navel show almost down to your pubic hair because you're trying to, to get somebody to validate you. Somebody tell me I'm beautiful. Somebody tell me I'm worthy. Somebody tell me I'm sexy. So uh, you look, you're scratching, you're digging, you're scratching, you're digging. You men are walking around with pants so tight, you can measure the length of you know what and the width of, of the other. And you're walking around, somebody look at me, validate me, tell me I'm worthy, tell me I'm a man, tell me I'm good look and tell me I'm husky. Why do you need that? Because there's a hole in your soul, at least one big one. There's a hole in your soul, baby. And what God is trying to tell you is all these other people you're trying to get validation from. They need the very same thing you need. And you'll never get it from them. You might get a pin. You might get a watch. You might end up with a nice little bonus at the end of the year. And a couple of applauses. But you will never get the validation you need in your soul without the love of God. And you will never experience the love of God until you begin to seek him with all your might. But some of you won't seek him because you're so busy scratching and digging, scratching and digging. Have you ever seen the difference between sugar twin and sugar? Let's use fructose sugar. We know how that tastes, some of us. Or cane sugar, pure cane sugar. The good sugar, not the bad stuff, not the bleached out mess. We're talking the pure stuff. So you taste it. It's sweet. There's no funny aftertaste. There's no weird aroma. It's just sugar, pure sugar. It's sweet. Then you reach over and get a box off the counter that's been made by man in a laboratory and it's white and flaky like sugar right it sweetens like sugar but when you stir it up and you taste it it leaves a nasty aftertaste 
doesn't it? You can use pure sugar or you can use twin or any sugar substitute like aspartame or or equal, any of these things, saccharin, all of those leave a nasty aftertaste. Let me tell you this. God's love will never leave a nasty aftertaste in your soul. God's love will never leave you an emotional scar. God's love may hurt your feelings for a minute because he's telling you something about yourself he wants you to, to correct, but he's not doing anything to hurt you like people do with their so-called sugar twin love. So the man lays you down in that bed and he's telling you how beautiful you are, how wonderful you are, and how magnificent you are. And the tears are running back in your eyes because you know this is what you've always wanted. This man won't even remember your name in the morning. I used to have long talks with my father. And for those of you young ladies who don't have a daddy, for those of you young men who don't have a daddy to tell you, let me tell you this, baby. Folks will tell you anything when you're meeting their need to make sure you follow through so they don't get left hanging. Now, you want me to break it down a little further? And this is not to be irreverent. It's to show you the reality of life. A man gets a little rise in his Levi's and all of a sudden you are the most beautiful thing on the planet. Because you're the one that's available right now, willing and able. And you're willing to bend over and crack a smile, baby. And you know the likelihood of that man coming back to you the next day is not going to happen. But you get your two little seconds of validation while he's hollering his head off at that very second that he explodes. And after the explosion is over, he could... You could be a piece of furniture as far as he's concerned. No more feelings, no more nothing. He's done. Just like flushing the toilet. Done. And you go for that. That kind of sugar twin crap. You go for that kind of saccharin version of love. Because you don't know what love really is. And I'm going to tell you, you will never know what it really is until you really experience God. You'll have a human version of love. But you'll never know what real love is till you experience God. That is the ultimate. That's the origination of love. We're little cookie cutter pieces and crumbs in comparison. But God's love beyond the galaxy, baby. So let me tell you, for those of you who don't get it, when God gets through with you, with his love, you won't need to run around looking for validation. You won't need a lady to stroke your ego by letting you control the crap out of her. You won't need a woman to look up at you like you're the best thing since cheese. You won't need a man to look at you from head to toe with x-ray vision, measuring you, measuring every part, trying to let you know all that he wants to do with you. No, you won't need all that crap. When you find out what real love is. Because then you won't need your ego anymore. Once you are validated, the ego is like, is like crap. It's like cotton candy. Put cotton candy under some water and see what happens to it. It just shrinks down and melts to nothing. It's nothing to it but a bunch of air and a bunch of mess. It's nothing to it. But it looks big. Oh, you get a big old thing of cotton candy. But you just put a little bit of water on that sucker and it's all over. You find out it's pretty much like a cloud. And it's gone. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. 
Cotton candy will never fill your belly. Never. I don't care how much you eat. It might make you sick, but it won't fill your belly. Food will. Real food will fill you. Real love will fill your spirit. You hear me? A little scratching and digging you're doing out there, that'll never fill you, baby. Never. No matter how many times you get that scratch. No matter how many times you get somebody out there to, to give you a few seconds or a few moments of, of, of grandeur, of glory. When that's all over with, baby, you're right back down to nothing again. Empty. Empty. Living a life of emptiness. Jesus came, as you heard everybody in our church group say, came to live an example of the Lord's love, live an example of holiness and righteousness so we can have an example to follow. He came to empower us, to heal us, to forgive us for sin. He died on the cross. He rose three days later from the grave. And all authority was given to him in earth, in the sea, in hell, and in heaven. All authority given to him. There is nothing that exists that does not fall under his authority, including the devil. Now, my question to you, what are you going to do to draw close to this God that loves you that much? That he not only deals with the big things, but he deals with those secret, those secret skeletons rattling in your closet. He deals with those hidden holes in your souls that you've got all kind of band-aids over, hiding them from society, pain management, so to speak. What is it going to take for you to go after God with all your might? Everything has a cost, y'all. Everything, including some of what you're doing right now. Everything has a cost. Aren't you willing to pay a little bit of a price? A little sacrifice, a little something, something, give up a little some of yourself to get all that God has to give? Aren't you willing to give up your dead walk, dead man walking? Living empty, walking empty, feeling empty. Life ain't worth living. I ain't nobody. I ain't got nothing going for me. Blah, blah. I mean, you can go down the list of all the, the no-nos in your life. Oh, yeah. You can go down a list. Ad infinitum. But God's got an eternal list. Life, peace, joy, love. Oh, mm. Mm -mm. A sense of purpose, fulfillment, gratitude, satisfaction, guaranteed. There's so many things God has, including eternal heaven in his presence. There's so much to reach up to. Aren't you tired of reaching down beneath your privilege? Aren't you tired of living beneath yourself? Aren't you tired of settling for second, third, fourth rate, tenth rate? Aren't you tired of scraping the bottom of the barrel, trying to get a little nutrition for your spirit, for your mind, for your life? Aren't you tired of the synthetics? Aren't you tired of the lies, the games, the facade? Aren't you tired of the masquerade? The Bible says, look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord. Not from what's down here. God uses what's down here to help you grow and develop. Yes. God will even let the devil do a little dirt to help you grow. But the ultimate one making things happen for you and on your behalf and for your good 
is God. Don't forget that. Now, this is for those of you who have a little belief there is still a God. For those of you who don't, wipe the dust off my feet, I'm gone. I'm down the road. I ain't trying to convince nobody. That's for the Holy Spirit to do. But for those of you who have the slightest inkling that there could be any truth to what I'm saying, now is the time for salvation. Now is the time to seek the Lord while he may be found. There will come a day where you'll seek and you will not find. Don't wait until it's eternally too late. And don't take the mark, whatever you do. God bless you. Psalm 27, mm -hmm. um, I'm paraphrasing, but the Lord says that even if your mother and father could thank you, mm -hmm. I will take you up. And that is what has gotten me through to this day. Thank you. Amen. Amen. That's what's gotten me through too, girl. Yes. But you guys be encouraged because no matter what hurt you have, no matter what wounds you brought along down the road, God can heal every single one. And you can tell somebody all the details of it and not feel an ounce of pain. God so far removes those scars from our spirits. And that's part of why he came was to set at liberty them that are bruised, to set us free from all those old chains of the past. Oh, Heavenly Father, I come to the throne of grace to see the same boldly where we may obtain help and mercy in the time of peace. I thank you, Father God, that even in these last days, you reach out, you reach out to us. Since this dying world that continuously turns its back on you, that continuously sits in your face, that continuously rejects you, that continuously is unbelieving, but you still reach out your hand. And I just want to say, Lord, that somehow, some way, those that are filled with apathy, that are filled with cynicism, and just Hopelessness. I, I pray that even your love can pierce that darkness. I thank you for it, Father, that everybody on this line and anybody that will hear this message after uh, we're done here, that it will reach them and they will know that there is some light. There is a light in all this darkness. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 Mm-hmm.